All right, without fail, October rolls around, and this question gets asked of our CBS2 News First Alert weather team. Is it going to be a bad winter? And they're like, oh. <laughs> CBS2 <laughs> meteorologist <laughs> Vanessa Murdoch spoke with three scientists in hopes of finding the answer we're looking for. Blinding snow, bitter cold. What will the fast approaching winter season deliver? I asked three scientists whose research focuses on answering that question. If I had to put my head on the block for the tri-state area, it looks as though the next few months will be a bit warmer than normal um, and uh, a bit drier than normal. Simon Mason of Columbia University explains the driving force behind our winter weather is the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, a climate pattern in the Pacific Ocean where water temperatures on the west coast of South America warm or cool. El Nino is when water temperatures are warmer than normal. This uh, ultimately leads to sort of a, 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 law, a pattern that favors, um, uh, in our region, it, it tends to favor uh, fewer nor'easters. When water temperatures run below normal, that's La Nina. For the third winter in a row, La Nina will drive the forecast. Brian Cully with Stony Brook University says La Nina favors average to below average snowfall and storm systems rolling our way from Canada. Alberta clippers move through quickly and drop a little snow. It's looking, you know, in my view, more like a, a, a normal type of winter. However, a La Nina based forecast can get preempted when other atmospheric circulations act up, like the polar vortex, a large area of low pressure that sits over the North Pole. When it weakens, Arctic air spills south and our weather pattern changes. That's actually what happened last winter. We probably would have had a, a, an average or below average snowfall. The polar vortex broke down. We ended up with that. No, one to two foot snowfall event in late January. Judah Cohen with Verisk uses Siberian snow cover to generate his winter forecast. He believes the extent of Siberian snow cover affects the strength of the polar vortex. More snow in Siberia, the weaker the winds tend to be. If you have a more disrupted or weaker polar vortex, the, you know, the chances of uh, a cold air outbreak, a big snowstorm, you know, I greatly increase. Cohen typically releases his snowfall projection in early November, but offers this early outlook for you, our CBS 2 News viewers. This could change significantly over the next few weeks. Cohen's forecast, 21 and a half inches of snow in Central Park. Taking all this into consideration, expect a warmer than normal winter, which would limit snowfall potential. Yes. <laughs> Seasonal snowfall will likely fall between 21 and a half inches and the average of 29.8. From the Upper West Side, Vanessa Murdoch, CBS 2 News. Okay, the meteorologists have spoken. Mm, well, it's like, like it's like economists speaking. There's a lot of, you know, back and forth going between. Yep. What do you think, Lonnie? Well, I will tell you, okay, you heard him say this is going to be our third straight year of La Nina, right? right? Well, there's always exceptions to the rule, all right? Last year we had, you know, a pretty good sized winter in terms of above average snowfall. But go back the year before that. It was like a drought, a snow drought around here. So, yeah, let's, uh, look, there's going to be snow this winter, all right? And, and I would sort of side with what he was saying, but just know there's always exceptions, always exceptions.